Welcome back to Computer Networks, a Systems Approach, Chapter 1. Uh, in the last video, we had a look at the outline of the chapter and what the goals for the chapter were. Uh, and so now we're going to start moving into the, um, uh, the material. Uh, and so the first, let me get the right uh, view here for us. There we go. Um, where we want to start is with applications. This is the first of the first, yeah, first of the five items. Uh, in the chapter for us to look at. So, in fact, applications really is actually what most of us know uh, about the internet. You know, we, we put an application on our phone, or we're using programs on computers. Uh, we're using things that are built on top of the network to deliver some kind of outcome for us. So that might be the World Wide Web when you're uh, looking at web pages and things. It could be email, social media, streaming audio, video file sharing, instant messaging, all of these things, or a variety of other things that you might be doing. Uh, and so, you know, these are the ways that we use uh, the internet. And, you know, you might be getting your weather, uh, you might be talking to friends while you're watching this video um, via instant chat messages or whatever. And, and these are all things the network can do for us. So this is actually really, really good and helpful. Uh, there are other actual roles of interacting with uh, computer networks. There are the people who design and create the networks. There are the people who operate and manage the networks. And there are the people who write those applications. Indeed, many of you may actually end up writing network-based applications. If you write a, a phone app, uh, it's almost certainly going to be uh, a networked application in some way, uh, as most phone apps you know, make some use of uh, network services, even if it's just to show ads to people playing a game. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, applications are the, the predominant thing that we look at uh, with the uh, internet. And so if we look at uh, an example of that, so uh, here we have uh, Cisco WebEx as a video streaming app. And this is an application that probably most of us have become very familiar with over the past uh, couple of years as COVID-19 has kind of gone through, uh, you know, at the, the time I'm recording this in early 2021, it's all very fresh uh, in our memories. And whilst video uh, streaming and these kind of you know, video conferencing applications have been around for a very long time, actually, since around the, the 1990s, uh, some of them could even work on very slow dial-up internet connections. Uh, but now that we have higher speed networks with lower latency uh, and generally better performance, these are actually now quite usable uh, for a great many tasks. And so you know, we can have multiple people uh, involved in a call, we can do screen sharing, uh, we can do text messaging and things in there. These actually become really rich networked communications platforms uh, for us. Uh, and so this is a, a really helpful thing uh, that's come about. Now, of course, behind the scenes, there's actually much more going on. Uh, and so the application tries to present the simplest, most intuitive uh, interface to the user. Well, hopefully it does. Uh, but behind the scenes, there's actually, uh, you know, the, the technical aspects that need to be addressed. And so, on the internet, uh, we use URLs, so universal resource locators, uh, sorry, uniform resource locators uh, that you know, have a kind of structure and allow us to make it, you know, applications that are much easier to identify other applications and services on the internet and connect to them and use them and interact with them. And so, you know, a very common uh, if we go from the, the top of an application, we have you know, the URL and we have what the application is trying to achieve. And then if we actually start breaking that down, we actually see that the URL begins with this HTTP colon slash slash. This is the protocol that it's actually going to use uh, for the network communications. This may be completely invisible to the end user, uh, but as it becomes much more visible to the developers and the maintainers of the applications uh, and the network operators who have to manage the traffic uh, that generates over the network from the application. And below that, HTTP is built on top of the transmission control protocol, TCP. Uh, and so this is the next layer down uh, in the application, uh, in the way that it's actually implemented and working over the network. And so this manages congestion and uh, you know, a number of other network features. And then actually, if we, we drill down into what's happening in the TCP uh, connection things, we actually see that you know, there's other things that we have to do. We have to work out the IP address from the host name that we're trying to connect to. So here we have www.cs.princeton.edu. Uh, that has to get turned into an IP address, maybe an IPv4, maybe an IPv6 address. Uh, and you know, 
we have there's the domain name service DNS that will be used to do that resolution and that might have half a dozen messages go through. Uh, and then you have another three messages for the establishment of the TCP uh, connection to that IP address and the port number indicated by the, uh, the HTTP protocol. And then the HTTP protocol itself will have messages going uh, across there. You have to do in minimally the request uh, and the acknowledgement of the request and then the data starts coming uh, as a reply. Uh, and so this might take another three or four or five messages depending on the size of the, uh, the transfer or very many in fact, if it's a, a large transfer. Uh, and then finally, to take down the TCP connection to clean up after ourselves so that we're ready to have the next connection at the end, there might be a, another uh, you know, uh, three or four messages as we go through that shutdown process. So fetching a single web page, for example, as we have <coughs> in that example URL, might actually result in something like 17 or more uh, network packets, network messages, pieces of traffic on the network. So the network is actually having to do quite a lot more below, but the developer and the end user actually sees a much simpler approach. They see an abstracted view of the network. And this is because the network has these layers uh, in there that we'll talk much more about as we go forward. Uh, so that at each uh, stage of the process, at each layer, you only have to look at a, a relatively simple uh, aspect of what's going on. And this makes it much simpler to write these applications and maintain them. Uh, and just reduce, you know, it makes it so it's much easier to have general purpose applications and for the network underneath to change how it works if necessary without you having to change your application source code or indeed the way you use the application. So again, this is some of that generality that the internet uh, has brought in that's really powerful. So yeah, uh, that's what we want to talk about for the moment. And we will, in the next video, continue on uh, as we start looking at applications and how they might be implemented. So uh, thank you again, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.